You're still watching this after that crappy weekend of football and injuries? Well, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay tuned for all the better, better times that are coming for us as fantasy managers. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, ouch! Welcome <laughs> in. Hey, who? The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore back in the building. Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Very unique opportunity here for the foot clan because Mike and I haven't seen Jason really uh until pretty much this very moment and so we will be reacting together to a weekend of football yeah what a good weekend of football it was yeah I mean you've got to be thrilled to be back in the building to talk about the moves you've made and the way they've Helped your season, like the, the way that they broke the the way yeah. that things that broke for you. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I'm a, a, a proud new uh, David Montgomery manager. That's <laughs> cool. That's cool. Um, so I got you then, right? That was on me. Uh, I made a big Wednesday case for David Montgomery, and you said, and you fell for it. I should have known that the Reaper was coming a calling. Oh, uh, that, I think you're the injury Reaper this year. This year, certainly. I mean, our, my league of record team. I'm, I'm, I'm one of you. When I, when I tweeted, this was like a week or two ago, pre previous to these new injuries I had this week, and I had so many people just be like, "I am you." I, you know, some teams just you get you get it all. <laughs> you, you know, we. We get all of the good injuries. No, that... not all. You had only all you had was Dobbins. Yeah. Eckler. Mm -hmm. A -chan. Jefferson. A Chan. Yeah. And then obviously you traded A Chan in in order to keep battling because, mm -hmm. like you said, you're like the listener out there. You're fighting. You you care. Yeah. So you went to bat and you said, "Hey, A Chan's out for four weeks. I need to let win. me go get me a horse." Yeah. So I got David Montgomery. I got a lion, and he was and. Um, he went back in the cage. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it was a it was a really brutal weekend. Injuries everywhere, and you kind of get an understanding of the weekend when we are browsing the Monday Punday submissions. And some weeks it is flooded with the good performances of the week, and then other weeks are like this week when it was hard to. I mean, there were basically three players, and I'll get into the Monday Punday here. But there were like three players people were happy with. And I read something this morning, and I I don't remember where I read it. Otherwise, I'd give you a shout-out, so I'm sorry. But essentially, like the percentage of games this season hitting the under is something like a record since 2000. It's it's a an incredible amount of games have, I guess, underwhelmed compared to expectation yeah i mean the the dolphins are trying their best to yeah they can't hold the whole league up. they can't hold the whole league up it's it's crazy when i go and i look at what Would you almost happened. spill or did you spill no i almost lost the whole mug <laughs> right i almost lost the entire mug onto the laptop go on you jason just, i forgot how to hold things. yeah yeah <laughs> but um if you look at just just your fantasy league scoring. You know, we, we I play in a couple leagues where you've got to hit a certain threshold to be in the top half. You know, like the, we do that in the Megala Bowl where um, you, you get one victory for beating your opponent and one victory for scoring in the top half. And a lot of times it's like you need 135 points to, you know, in, in these leagues to, to get top half. It's like, oh, you got 109 this week? You're good. Mike and I felt like our game was – Mike and I – took one another on this weekend um, and then we were the only two in the studio watching so we were just pretty much just having dud after dud and I think we were the third and fourth highest scoring teams in the Something league. Something like that, yeah. Despite, you lost CMC, I yeah. lost Debo Samuel. Mm -hmm. um, we had 
just, I mean, you played Deontay Foreman. He wasn't great. He was uh, okay. He but... ended up okay at the end. I mean, I had D Damian Pierce. That was awful. Uh, it was Rich Rebar. He said, heading into Monday Night Football, 59.8% of all NFL games this season have gone under the game total. That is the highest rate through six week uh, through six weeks of any season in the 2000s. So we it need, is. We need to look at the rules. We need to change some things again. The rules? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The NFL rules. Oh, yeah. to open things up even yeah. more. No, I look. I have we considered no tackling at all. We have considered that based on some of the penalties that took place this weekend because uh, there were five or six. I don't. I, I'm all telling tackles you, are penalties. All tackles all are tackles, illegal. Yeah, are illegal. Yeah. Well, see, that would get the scoring up. Yeah, that's Let's all we're go. talking about. Also, touchdowns are worth eighty points <laughs> each. No, I mean some of these calls, these roughing the passer calls, or th they were ridiculous this weekend. That one on Josh Allen, oh yeah, asinine. <laughs> the defense that was that was a you tackled you tackled him. You tackled. You're not, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> there was a hit on Elijah Moore that was called a uh, defenseless receiver, which was a garbage call. I mean, here's what you do: just put one dedicated person in the booth. When a questionable call is made on the field, that person says, Psst, huddle up for a second. One, two, three. That's not a penalty. That's it. That's <laughs> they, all you have to do. They they should have a different colored flag, like an orange flag. Like, like this, uh, this oh, could tell, be, this tell me could be a, I think I might have seen a penalty. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> you know, and then it, and then they just it's got get little that. question marks all over that flag. <laughs> for sure. All right, into Monday Punday we go. Might as well react to the weekend. And um, let's get it over. With. Here's a here's a fair warning. There were um, a higher percentage of poop related puns this week. Oh, fantastic! Well, it, you know, it won't take us long. Let's start with the good, like Raheem the Dream or Kai Win Williams. Yes, and Mike, uh, we got Amon Hurrah St. Brown, and that's all for that's the good. That's it. It's over. Uh, DeAndre Flopkins, Poo Poo Nakua. <laughs> Alexander Matheson. D. Boo Samuel. <laughs> oh, oh, speaking of Sam. Art. Sam oh. Laporta potty. Yes. We've been waiting forever for that one. How about Doo Doo Atwell? <laughs> Doo Doo Atwell. How about Jackson Smith and Jig Bust? And Jerry Booty. Jaggy. Jerry. Oh, that was that one. That was from Steve Smith. Yeah, Steve Smith yeah. putting him on blast. And Mike. <laughs> Brock Turdy. <laughs> yeah, you, uh. You were calling out Brock Turdy yeah. for most of the game. Yeah, I, I definitely and I was trying was. to defend him. No CMC, no Debo. I just I love that the the Trey Lance truther of the show. I've like I we we riffed. We finally riffed on Brock Purdy, and I was like, dude, I I think he's good. I made the joke of I'm I I think I'm finally getting to the point where I'm, I'm accepting that the 49ers may have made the right decision. And then he was terrible. We talked. Just terrible. We talked about you lost to PJ Walker. I mean, this, this is now, just keep it in mind. If you want to play defense against the 49ers, do what Jim Schwartz does. Because now you have Kyle Shanahan, who's one and nine against him. He averages 15 points a game, Kyle Shanahan does against Jim Schwartz defenses. And what they score, 17? I mean, uh, it's just, I, I saw a lot of the, you know, like, well, well, you know, he lost McCaffrey, lost Debo. The Cleveland Browns were on a backup quarterback. That's, yeah. They didn't have Nick Chubb. Like, they were without a lot of things, too, from the beginning of the game. Not, not in the middle. Didn't lose George Kittle. Couldn't get him the ball. Didn't lose Brandon Ayuk. Oh, man. Who had a couple of drops in this one. Yeah, I mean, step one, make it rain. That's That that helps. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was um, it was a weird weekend of the, the upsets. Yeah, uh, no undefeated teams left. Yeah, yeah. I you mean, have, the Eagles uh, went down against the Jets. Crazy. Backup quarterbacks beating these undefeated yeah. teams. Yeah, the Giants just couldn't pull it off. The only thing that stayed the same this weekend was Jason having no running backs. Hmm. Yeah. It's the Man. only thing. All right. Well, let's get into all that injury news because uh, that's what Jason wants to talk about. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. David Montgomery left the game with a rib injury, did not return. X-rays were negative, but uh, the news, according to the Detroit Free Press this morning, is that he is expected to miss some time with a rib injury. Oh, cool. 
All right. Well, the nice thing is if he misses, let's say, two weeks, then they have their bye week. So I might have him in a month. All right. So what are you doing? <clears throat> I'm You gonna play him? No, I'm not gonna <laughs> play him. Uh I will probably I'm guessing I will cry in my closet. That is <laughs> If I had to guess what my mode of operation is going to be, it's just going to be lights off. Now, I'm, to be honest, I'm shocked that you haven't already done that. Yeah. Well, i i was in uh, I was in Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, so happiest place on earth. Happy. I was neutral. I was just completely. You know neutral. what? I had just, no happiness, just no going sadness. Through space man. <laughs> you know what I told you before you left? The last time I went to Disneyland was uh -huh. during a championship game, where I needed Dalvin Cook to score six points. To win a championship, it's not the happiest place on earth for fantasy football. No. Apparently. No, it wasn't. Um, Justin Fields, dislocated right thumb, left the game, didn't come back. X-rays were negative. MRI on Monday. We'll find out if uh, – what was the, the backup's name? Ba bag Bagent? Bagent? Something like that. I think you called him Bilbo Bagent. <laughs> <laughs> I so did. So that's yep. about right. I did um, do that. CMC, oblique and rib injury. Debo, shoulder injury. Jason, you had a little bit of news on CMC. Yeah, so ironically, the, the CMC injury and the David Montgomery injury are, are, are very, very similar injuries. Um, CMC, you know, it's, it's a non-broken rib. Uh, so you're going to have... Also, I have some of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you're going to have uh, a week or two. CMC, though, you know, he's played through injuries like this before. It's very tough. They have the Monday night football game this week, which is good news oh, and bad news. Man. Gives them an extra day to recover, to get out there. It gives them that little prime time need. You know what I mean? Like that, you, we're human They'll beings. They'll want to like, be there, right? They'll want to be out there on Minnesota prime Minnesota in prime time. Um, oh, but man. also, it, it makes it very difficult as managers to actually, you know, have a replacement in tow. I mean, Jordan I mean, Mason will be on the waiver show tomorrow. In a big way, yeah. And, um, Elijah, and Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell too, who was, I mean, Elijah Mitchell was back for his first game. He was bad, I believe. He finished with negative yards. He did, but I assumed uh, he was but, more rostered than Mason. Is that not a good assumption? I, oh no, I'm sure he is more rostered. But I, I'm guessing. I'll, I, I'll try I, and find some. I would numbers. imagine he's widely available after m missing the last couple weeks. I mean, I'll say it now. If I had Christian McCaffrey, I would do everything in my power to just have. Jordan Mason on my roster so that I could ride it into Monday night. I'm seeing 28% from Mitchell. Okay. So, yeah, you're so that'll be to... the fight this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Debo's injury, early news was that it's not considered serious, but that doesn't mean he plays Monday night either. So you start looking at, I mean, maybe you end up uh, doing what we always say, put your earlier players in the running back spots, the wide receiver spots, throw CMC in that flex spot. Maybe all of a sudden it's a Juwan Jennings pivot on Monday night if he doesn't play, or a Ronnie Bell pivot, or something of that nature. I mean, you're playing Minnesota. There are points to be had there. Not playing CMC and him being active is, yeah, that's the worst possible. Like I just can't imagine unless you knew he was doubtful, which we'll tell you all week long what's going on. I'm getting into it early, but we'll find out more. Trevor Lawrence knee injury considered day to day will undergo an MRI. Yeah, there was a lot of quarterback injuries too ryan Tannehill ankle injury that's the same high ankle injury that he had last year where he missed most of the year i mean there this is horrific news for the titans malik willis came in he did not look like he had uh improved over the <laughs> offseason uh he looked like malik willis from last year i mean it it could be Will Levis time, so they drafted him in the second round. Uh, oh, I this doubt past it. year. I mean, I don't know. You think but that they could just completely? I, but uh, the the point being, this feels like Derrick Henry had a good game. Like Derrick Henry has had some momentum in the last couple of weeks, and Hopkins had the huge game two weeks ago. But if you don't have Ryan Tannehill and you have Levis or Malik Willis running this offense, it's it's probably going to be brutal. Yeah, your DeAndre Hopkins uh, shares will have been deleted. Yes. Jimmy Garoppolo left the game with a back injury, did not return. He was taken to a local hospital to evaluate Sheesh. internal damage. Sheesh. Instead of the rookie, Brian Hoyer ends up uh, taking the field. Looked pretty good. 
I mean, there, there. So often we've been in this situation where the rookie is more exciting for the team, but the veteran is more exciting for fantasy. It's the like, you know, Andy Dalton taking the field, or we want James Swinston or Brian Hoyer. Um, in days gone by, it was Josh McCown who almost rooted right. for him to start. I mean, there, there it, is something to be said about the veteran taking over and being able to provide a little bit of consistent fantasy value. And, and they're three and three now. They're three and three. They will go on the road and take on the Chicago Bears. Oh next, boy, next week. I mean, it's probably going to be Hoyer. Damian Harris left the game oh, on a spine man. board, taken to hospital for evaluation. Gave a thumbs up when he left the field, which everybody, you know. Seeing that the Buffalo jersey again, yeah, uh -huh. it was that was rough. Uh, Josh Allen left momentarily to the blue tent, came right back out there. Garrett Wilson, he left two times with the ankle injury. It is a bye week for Garrett Wilson, so you expect him to be okay. And then we got word that Kyron Williams uh, is getting an MRI. He left without a walking boot. Uh, Sean McVay said that he thought he would be okay. He tweaked the ankle late in the game, but. Ronnie Rivers, his backup, has a PCL sprain that could keep him out a few weeks. And Zach Evans enters the conversation as a depth piece with potential start options. Mm -hmm. That's my kind of running back, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be diving down to, to Zach Evans on uh, my main team. Hmm. Delicious. Uh, and then before the games, Deshaun Watson, rotator cuff contusion. You can't drive the ball when he throws. I mean, the Browns have said that he's he's injured. How about this? Tell us that three weeks ago. Mike made the point that, like, why throw him under the bus yeah. about, like, being medically cleared to play and not coming out and clarifying it to the media immediately. Yeah. just Like, okay, he's medically cleared, but the pain is so severe that we're concerned that he's going to hurt himself further or, you know, throw interceptions, whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's, it's real easy. You, you just say, yeah, no, he is – he's – even if you want to throw out the medical cleared, which I don't think you have to do that. Like that's, you should not do that. Yes, it. I mean, you also with, you should not clear him with right. Him. He shouldn't if he can't play. I mean, which he well, can't. Well, but medically clear just means they're saying he won't. He's not at risk of of hurting himself further by throwing the ball. It's just because I, he can't throw. He's like there. <laughs> you, he will not hurt himself anymore. He can't could be can't hurt himself. It, yeah, it could. It be. was Baltimore and San Francisco, right? Yeah, and then they end up winning the ball game. They did. Which is uh, incredible, and that defense is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, they play so much man, and I was impressed. Uh, Anthony Richardson found out he may undergo season-ending surgery. He has gotten five opinions, from what I understand, and um, <laughs> trying to find that one. There is a strong, uh, like several of the medical opinions he's received, says he will be better off getting the surgery and starting fresh next year. That's super disappointing. Yeah, that's a bummer. Because we don't even really know what he is. I mean, we've we we have got to see what one full game, and, and was that even a full game? Because he got concussed at the end of it. No, the concussion was week two. The week one was he hurt his leg on a right. uh, on a goal line run, but he, he came uh, out for a little while. Oh right? yeah, he played ninety six percent okay, of snaps. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, we've seen very little of Richardson, but here's the truth: Gardner Minshew is a better quarterback for. Michael Pittman and Josh oh, yeah, Downs. For sure. And Josh Downs is like legitimately a PPR start worthy player at this point. Yeah, and Gardner was not good. <laughs> oh man. He was not good for the Colts yesterday. No, he he he, he may provide for Downs but, and Pittman, but he looked really awful. Yeah. Anytime he tried to go down the field more than ten yards, it was an absolute catastrophe. But he's also a really slow scrambler, man. Yeah. But it's but fourteen targets, nine for one hundred and nine for Michael Pittman. That is, that's that's a okay, man. And <laughs> we'll take that. And Downs uh, got the touchdown. Downs uh, got the touchdown, yeah. which was important because he took his eight targets and turned it into twenty-one yards. Yeah, yeah PPR. Um, Cliff Herbert went on IR. Man, there's a lot of injury news. Mm -hmm. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. I will say that I did uh, some scientific studies oh, this weekend. Nice. Uh, as, we learn? as they relate to fantasy football and the unobserved player uh, rule mm. that I mentioned, where uh -huh. if you watch, yep. your opponent's players will do really well. I couldn't watch the second <laughs> half of last night's game, and it was the most pathetic performance of my 
Fantasy Football Life because I was uh, playing a video game with Papa Josh during the second half because you had Stephon Diggs, I had James Cook. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to lose, so I just couldn't go through it. And I didn't watch, and I won. You did. You so don't a, watch football, by people. By a point and a half. By a point and a half. And, and um, I may or may not have been asking Josh to check his phone <laughs> over and over again. What's the score? What's the score? But I wouldn't watch. To, well, not for science. I, for science. Well, I watched, so there you go. We have a control. We do. We, this is fact. <laughs> Look away. A couple times I looked at the screen, <laughs> Stephon Diggs caught passes. We're going to need to test this out with like a mirror. Like, if you watch the game through a mirror, through a, through a reflection, Ooh. does that cancel out the, the bad juju? Or even or go all the way right. to the opposite, and all of a sudden, it's great juju. Hmm. It would change everybody's handedness. Yes. And the, the score will look funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did get breaking news just now. The Broncos might be making a change on defense. What? According to the Pat McAfee show, Rex Ryan. What? could take over as the defensive coordinator for the Broncos. It, That'll I mean, go well. If you want to form the most polarizing team in the history of the NFL, put a Russ, Rex, and Peyton together. Hmm. Delightful. Hey, there were some studs. We're going to talk about them right now. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Does anybody have whiter teeth than Rex Ryan? No. Has he is that world record stuff? Yes, that is. He, he, his teeth are actually LEDs. Uh, <laughs> people don't realize that, right. but they is some are. Some of that sphere technology from Vegas. Exactly right. Wow. That, those are the ones. Um, wow. Yeah, he he lights them up. Wait, have what? you never noticed this, Mike? I'm looking at it right. This these great teeth. Well, yeah. These what? are like Ross from Friends teeth, man. <laughs> yeah. Are these real? No. Those oh aren't real. no! You can't. Have you ever seen teeth like that? In the history of when he went in looking for, at humans, when before, he went in for veneers, no, of course those aren't real. They showed him the like different hues you can get the veneers in, and he said LEDs. Yeah, he 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 took a white out out of his pocket and he filled in one of the color palettes. Said that's what I'm looking for. I mean, those things they're good for the defense because it will distract the offense from the sideline. Blind him to a tongue of Ilo at 21 for 31, 262 and three. All in the first half, really. Uh, he now leads the NFL in passing yards, yards per attempt. Uh, he has 14 passing touchdowns. He is on pace for 5,300 passing yards and 40 touchdowns. And that doesn't seem like enough. Absurd. Like, it's not, you know, sometimes we look at the, these, uh, for instance, we'll, we'll talk about him soon, but when, when you look at projections over a certain period of time, they can be outlandish. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe. That will be very true for Mr. Adam Thielen, the youngest. Most <laughs> oh, keep dogging him. Oh, what? Keep dogging oh, I him. I haven't been dogging him in weeks. I will. I will continue. <laughs> That's Mike's job. I I mean, he. this guy is on fire. But his, Dynasty superstar. His pace since week one is almost 1,700 yards. 160 receptions, 1,689 yards then and you're right the pace won't continue for Thielen which I might as well bring him up I mean he was a a monster this week but what's nice is Carolina is going to be in that situation all year long he is just set up for what Bryce Young needs I saw a picture that said uh it was like on the it was like a door to an office and it was Bryce Young PPR department mm. and then there was a picture on the wall and it said employee of the month Adam Thielen <laughs> yeah. because uh it's just perfect for that team, but Tua, fifty three hundred and forty. If they keep playing like this, sure. I mean, Philadelphia next week—that's a good matchup. That's great news. That I mean, is... you want when Caroline went up fourteen nothing. I was thrilled. Oh, for sure. I, I told Mike, I go awesome. Yeah. This is great news. Yeah, I knew it was bad news for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jared Goff, Dude. thirty for forty four and three fifty three and two. Jared Garf on the road. Road Garf. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now he gets to take on the Baltimore Ravens, followed by the Raiders, completing a career-high 70% of his passes. Got Amon Ra back? Yeah, and he got Jamison Williams with one of the funniest touchdown this was... bomb receptions that you will ever see. I This was, like, it was almost 
on like full NFL bloopers moment of the ball is in the air and Jamison Williams is turning his head left and right. He has no idea where the ball is. F one final turn and the pass was just so good that it it just lands right in his arms. And he, and he, I mean, he made a great play after that, but he looked so inept he for, drops, for all the moments before it. He drops so many passes that the contrast between him making that catch, but Goff is the quarterback four and six point leagues. And this is this is why you want to be attached to the best offenses in football. And like legitimately, if David Montgomery misses time for Jared Goff, I mean, who is I didn't know it's probably Craig Reynolds will be the hammer, but how effective is Craig Reynolds going to be? Right. You're saying they might give Goff more chances yeah, to like throw this, the football. This is probably I don't know if this is a move on sell high moment I think maybe you just want to keep playing Jared Goff I saw so many puns related to how bad Jalen Hurts was but here he is in the studs still 280 and 3 in terms of fantasy football and yes he made some well, terrible 280 and, 280 and 1 sorry the, 280 the, the 3 is the interceptions oh that's right 280 and 1 but he scored on the ground 8 for yep. 47 um, it's he played poor and the Jets played great but for fantasy he was he was, he was very good because when, when you get a rushing touchdown, it's extremely helpful. All right, let's take a quick break and talk about some running backs. Raheem the Dream, Raheem must start, Raheem most it, touchdowns. It is out of control. 17 for 115 and 2. Did you say he's got 11 touchdowns? He has 11. Wow. Uh, and since 2000, there are only a handful of running backs that have 11 in the first six games. Priest Holmes two times, LT, Dalvin Cook, and now Raheem most. I'm willing to ridiculous. bet he's the oldest of the guys that have done that. I tweeted this morning, I have a dynasty team with Josh Allen, Christian McCaffrey, and Josh Jacobs that has been 100% carried <laughs> by two players that not a soul in a dynasty league would have wanted to throw a third-round pick at. You try you try. I mean, Adam Thielen and Raheem Mostert put up like seventy points for me or something. Yeah, it's it's not fair. I find it wonderful. Uh, Kyron Williams, second half dominance, Dude. twenty for one fifty eight and one. I think in the first half he was two for five. They they forgot to run. Yeah, for whatever reason. They, I mean, maybe they just they're like Cooper cuts back. Let's go real real pass heavy, and then they started giving Kyron Williams the ball in the second half and. I don't know what the number is, but just watching it was this guy is averaging about three yards before contact, and the defense knows they're going to run the ball. Like th they weren't hiding anything. They, it, it, was a it was hey, hey Arizona, we're going to run again, and they're like, okay, okay, we can stop it. This nope, no, they could not stop anything. This Arizona defense has collapsed. They came out in the second half, and I believe they they had a drive that was basically entirely run. Yes. they they just. Ran the ball like nine times in a row. Just stop us. Including, oh, you can't? Including a rushing touchdown that had three defenders on top of Kyron Williams, and they could not bring him down. Yeah, Sean McVay was just glowing about Kyron's performance in the second half. ETN has been dominant. Travis ETN, two more touchdowns. Uh, he is the RB3 on the season. How many yards? Go ahead. 55! Derrick Henry, 12 for 97. <laughs> Uh, take it while you can really it was one big play there was a 64 65 yard run something like that yeah um his touchdown run was was pretty nice as well mm -hmm. so uh, but you've got Tajay Spears uh still getting some work had a really nice run of his own and now you have extraordinary worries about the offense if you lose Tannehill you know it's like uh, they what is what was threat really, of passing is there to guard against? They do have the bye week, so maybe Tannehill will be good to go. And the big run for Derrick Henry was out of the Wildcat formation. So it was also a maybe they just do really that. good play call. Do you remember it? The the big run? The, the Wildcat, because yeah. they, they did a reverse behind him that he faked, and it just cleared it out. Brees Hall? Yeah, Brees maybe. Hall was good for fantasy. I mean, this is this was not stud-worthy. This was okay. 
Well, when when twelve for thirty nine and a touchdown on the ground, but he's still one of the highest scorers of the week, man. Yeah, I mean, I guess in the context of this week, that's why he's here. Yep, he's the RB five for oh, when he went twelve for thirty nine. Well, he had five for fifty four in the in as a receiver as well. I'm shocked. Needed one more yard. I mean, that's not. I mean, when you have a bunch of Montgomery and CMCs go down, I guess he raises up the the list. Kenneth Walker, mm -hmm. uh, RB7 on the year, 19 for 62 and a touchdown. He's had seven, five, five, and seven red zone carries the last four weeks. It almost feels a little bit like the Lions last year where they would just end up inside the 10 zone and not throwing for touchdowns. Uh, Ramondre and Ezekiel Elliott. Both had good games. Did Zeke have a good? I mean, yes, big, Zeke scored. Um, the big play was called back. Yeah, but he still scored. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Ten for forty-six and a touchdown for Ramondre. The big, the big help was he got back into uh, the passing game. Six targets, five for twenty-four. Yeah, Zeke had a long touchdown on a pass called back. Scored later. And Ramondre <clears throat> also left this game mm -hmm. for a little while. I know because I traded for Ramondre. <laughs> And after Montgomery went down, you guys were texting, and you're like, oh, no, Ramondre to the tent for a concussion. I was like, this, what is Which happening? Is, I mean, it is a worth noting of he played 65% of the snaps, which I'm seeing right now, so that was an uptick over the last couple of weeks. And he was forced to miss time with injury, and we got the targets back up there. So that's at least, I mean, the, the plan that, that Jason executed, which, I mean, I was a part of, hoping that they would – be true to the word of we're, we have to change up the offense. We got to do something, and that turned into six targets for Ramondre, which he needs to get featured there. Consider me in the sell high camp off of I, this game because I get it. It, this offense, Bill Belichick, Mac Jones, Malik Cunningham, I don't know who else is going to get their there, chances. Andy, Bring I can't sell him. I have no running backs. I need him. The there were some whispers some salacious rumors of um that will greer might be the one who gets a call yeah so we'll yeah. see i um i put in a waiver claim on will greer on sunday no morning. did you yeah. yeah uh and you grabbed malik cunningham and none of them are going to fix the problem they, no no one no, of the no. Worst, they definitely won't they're one of the worst offenses in football it's it i i, I made a list of players i've least enjoyed watching this year Number one on the list is Mac Jones. Number two on that list is Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. And number three on that list is Dalvin Cook. <laughs> Those are my top three least favorite to watch. Where's Ritter? Desmond Ritter isn't on that right now. Oh, okay. No. He's been playing better. He's he's uh, When I watch Mac Jones, I can't even get distracted by talent around him. At least when I watch Desmond Ritter, I can go, oh, there's Bijan. There, right. Oh, there's Drake London who had a good game. I mean, Bijan's not on the list, but I'm sure that Drake and Kyle Pitts are going to be in the studs. Yeah. Uh, more studs at running back real quick. Chuba Hubbard, 19 yeah. for 88 and a touchdown. All he does is perform when he gets a chance. They have the bye week, then they have Houston. So that will be a follow the news closely for what happens with Miles Sanders. Zach Moss back into the end zone. Zach Moss just 7 for 21. Jonathan Taylor just 8 for 19. Neither guy could get it going on the ground. Both got it going in the passing game. Six for thirty-eight for Moss, five for forty-six for Taylor. But it's a we pretty we, even split between the two as far as fifty percent of snaps yep. for Zach Moss, forty-two percent for Jonathan Taylor. And I I think you would expect to kind of see it now shift to where it's Jonathan Taylor in the lead. Although next week against Cleveland and then New and then Orleans. the Saints, it's it's a bad Aye. it's a bad looking run. Yep. Got to get those targets, man. Yeah, if you split at all against bad de or against really good defenses, that makes it tough to. And you got Gardner now. Hmm. Well, the but, but with Gardner is, I mean, seven targets for Moss, six for Taylor. That's yeah. That's an outrageous target share to the running back. That is fair. Kareem Hunt, twelve for forty-seven and a touchdown. I'm ashamed to say he looked pretty darn good against San Francisco. He did, and Jerome Ford was having a. I think a pretty bad game, but then at the end of the game, they yes. figured something out, and then all of a sudden, they were the running game opened up, and Jerome Ford padded his stat line seventeen for eighty four and two for seven through the air. So not a, not a terrible game for him. You want to talk about pace? Tyreek Hill on pace for twenty three hundred yards and seventeen touchdowns. 
He was six for 163. Uh, he had another touchdown, a deep one from Tua. Pretty comical, pretty impossible to stop. I've never seen a player more impossible to stop than Tyreek Hill this year. Do you think it's just oxygen? Like, is the only thing that can stop Tyreek no, Hill? cramps, too. He had cramps he had to leave. Week. He had to well, leave for cramps. That's what I mean. Like, he's – it's like his hydration – yeah. And energy is like the only thing. The defense cannot stop Tyreek Hill. Oh, he, the only thing that can stop Tyreek Hill is Tyreek himself. Right. It's just like, oh, man, he is too tired from dominating. <laughs> right. That's it. That's what yeah. you got to do. You just need you need to allow the first two. Four or five touchdowns? The, the first couple possessions. Just let it be uh, like an 80-yard touchdown bomb. So this is mm. like a, box, out. a boxing situation. Yeah, it's a rope-a-dope. <laughs> yeah, rope-a-dope. <laughs> Come on. Come get us. <laughs> Show me how fast you are. Oh, no, we can't stop you. I like the sound of that for <laughs> fantasy. Amon Ra, 12 for 124 He's and back, one. Baby. And his touchdown, he he needs to send a gift basket oh to Craig Reynolds. Gosh, yeah. what a block. He, that block was awesome. He annihilated I mean, that was, the defender. That was like my favorite block I can remember seeing. He, he, he scored that touchdown. Re right. Reynolds scored that touchdown. Uh, Amon Ra had no business getting a touchdown there. And then just blah, blah. <laughs> the number one fantasy wide receiver since week two is Adam Thielen. 11 for 115 and one yet again. 13 targets yet again. Unbelievable. Cooper Cobb, seven for 148 and one. <laughs> He's back, baby. Yeah, he was back. And for the first time, he was back in lieu of, or he, he took the place of any relevance for Puka Nakua. Yeah, Puka did have a down game. He dropped a touchdown at the beginning. He still had uh thirty three percent of the targets, so it wasn't like the they went away from him. Just was a down game for Puka. Yeah, I and I, Tutu. I don't yeah. yes. I don't worry about it very much for, for Puka. This was a game where, like like you said, drops a touchdown early, had the target share, and then that when they came out in the second half, they're like, Oh, we can just run the ball like crazy, totally successfully. You're up. You don't need to throw it anymore. But all of Cooper Cup's production came in the second half. Well, the majority it, of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, you, you're you're obviously splitting here. It's not going to be Puka minus Cooper Cup like we saw in the beginning of the year. But I'm I'm saying I'm not worried about like this is the type of game that I think people will overreact to and say, oh, now that Cooper Cup is fully back, Cooper Cup is the reason that Puka didn't have a good game. I don't huh. think that's the case. Huh. I think that it was the fact that. You know, the, he was not needed very much at the end of this game, and I don't think they're going to be having quite as often an easy matchup like Arizona. And Kyle's saying Puk, or, uh, Cup had 100, 100 yards by halftime. So, What did he end with? 148. I don't remember when the touchdown happened. That might The have touchdown been... was the end of the, the rushing drive. Okay. but he, So it, the, the, the most of his production was the first half. Okay. I stand corrected there. Um, Rashid Shahid, two for eighty-five and one. Drake London was crazy impressive on the day. He's so they're it, throwing the ball so much more in the last so couple good. of weeks. You love it. I I love Drake London, the player. It's been so frustrating over those first few weeks watching him not get targets, and then Desmond Ritter just be a, a below average starting quarterback. So. They were signs getting their butts kicked. I mean, signs of life. It's nice they didn't commit to just running the football. When I mean, they were getting they were getting whooped. They had to come back. Twelve targets is is amazing. In fact, on the year, just for context, he's on pace for 120 targets. Which there we go in this offense. You'll take it. Mm -hmm. uh, AJ Brown has been a monster. In fact, uh, I think he's five or four straight games with 125 or more yards. He's just unstoppable defensively. He's, that is correct. He is. He's so much bigger and stronger than all these DBs. You know, you. Uh, it. I think the last couple games have been really uh, disappointing for Devontae Smith, where I think fantasy managers are very disappointed in the total production. But he Absolutely. had eleven targets. He had he's, a bad drop. He in this is game. a great wide receiver, and and don't go away from him. But he is. The two, you know, there was the, there was you know questions, whispers early in the year in the off season, like could AJ Brown really be the two? No, AJ Brown is alpha. The nice, the the thing about Philadelphia's offense right now is that it doesn't look that great on a weekly basis. And when it was a well-oiled machine last year, 
Both players were always great. But when it when your offense isn't isn't quite as top tier, the alpha ends up being the more stabilizing force. I mean, if you, Devontae Smith through six weeks is the wide receiver thirty one. Yeah. I mean, there there doesn't mean he's not going to have good games. I mean, T. Higgins has been banged up and hurt and hasn't had a great season yet. But um, he he's a trade for candidate to me again. It was last year's story too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he had eleven targets. He had a brutal drop that would have potentially completely changed the game for Philadelphia's outcome. Michael Pittman, 14 targets. Stephon Diggs, 16 targets. Um, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Pittman was looking like a true bust in this uh-huh. yep. er- early part of the game. Ends up 9 for 109. I would expect more of the same for Michael Pittman. You want team- back in the in the drop? Well, I mean, if you if you have me, sure. Yeah, hey, we'll man, let you. Yeah, in. yeah. Pity City is. It's we're a, forgiving. It's a we're state full of, of mind. We're. I mean, yeah. like we're open. Yeah, come on in. You don't need no passport. Nah. The borders nah. are open. Nah, man. Friends, friends. I can leave though if I want to. Sure, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You could talk bad about our city when you're yeah. out there, and we'll still let you. You back just gotta in. let let the producers know. And we'll. How are you feeling today about Sounds Michael like Pittman? a nice sounds like a nice place. It, yeah. It's, it's great. Pretty cool, man, especially with uh, Gardner Minshew. He's yeah. got that vibe. Is this when people buy the t-shirts? They buy the Pity <laughs> City t-shirts right now. Shopballers.com. 91009. Um it's d- great to see. Stephon Diggs was the only man targeted in the first half. He is he has been so good. I mean, he is over 100 yards in 5 of 6 games. The disappointment was week 2 where he was 7 for 66. Other the but the Bills when I talk about an offense that looks broken the last couple of weeks is the Buffalo Bills. It was a travesty against the Jacksonville Jaguars a couple weeks or two weeks ago when they lost, putting up fourteen points against the Giants, and it was a just scratch and claw to finally get to fourteen. They gotta figure some stuff out. Well, I wonder if you guys care about this. Uh Breaking news. The 0-6 Panthers have handed off play calling duties. Frank Reich is giving them up. Uh-oh. Handing them off to yeah. offensive coordinator Thomas Brown. Oh, uh, I know someone that's going to care about that. <laughs> someone that's going to care about that a lot. Yeah. His name's Andy. I heard. I, I just I checked like the in. play calling. I checked in with the locker room. There was full support, unanimous support for the entirety of the team. There was just one. Mm. There was one nay. It, it, can we hear the voice? I <laughs> I don't like this plan. I like my target. This is uh oh. I I, mean, I, I, I don't care. He's probably fine, but yeah. we'll say if if Sunday rolls around or the next time they play and there's six targets for Thielen, you're going to freak out. You bet I will. <laughs> uh, Jalen Waddle seven for fifty one and one. He started to uh, he's starting to come alive a little bit. Jacoby Myers another touchdown oh, five man. for sixty one. Uh, Zay Flowers got back into the end zone. Kendrick Bourne ended up for uh, 10 for 89 in that game. It was hard to watch. Kendrick Bourne is just – the Patriots are so strange of – I feel like if they actually highlighted Kendrick Bourne more, the offense would be much better. I'm not saying he's a superstar, but he is – he's better than – like he's better, he's better than what they're putting out there. They, they're they one of the – Bill Belichick should be fired. His general managing of fire, this team. Re- fire, tired, retired. Refired? Yeah, I'm just. What are like, you doing? What I'm are trying, you trying to say? You can't fire Bill Belichick. Yes, you can. No. No, you no, can't. You can't. you can't fire. You, you have to let him walk. Yeah. You, no, you can fire. Well, you can You can fire him. You can go in that office and say, hey. You're going to retire. Yeah, you're going to retire. So you think the headline will be Bill Belichick has stepped down as head coach of the New England Patriots? Yeah. yeah that would yeah, be well, that, that. Okay. You can, you can f- fire him secretly. Through a resignation. But, you know, Nelson Aguilar, Devontae Parker, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kendrick Bourne, uh, these are not players that provide Mac Jones the ability to even put on display anything. They could use Jacoby Myers. Yeah, I mean, it's an embarrassment because they had made a decision. Apparently, Bill had made a decision post-Randy Moss that I'm never going to equip you. I mean, this has been this has been a long time that we're not going to invest at the wide receiver position on top tier talent, but we're going to invest more money than we should on Nelson Aguilar. They have actually and Johnu Smith. I think it is 
a talent evaluation problem because they have when when you bring up like oh they they invested too much money on Nelson Aguilar that was that was immediate in free agency that they they went out that year and they they went hard after their target and got him I think they celebrated they they drafted Nikhil Harry they spent draft capital to yeah that's another example they, yeah. they have they have tried to equip I think it's a talent evaluation problem with wide receivers they just suck at it apparently uh Travis Kelsey Dalton Schultz oh, man, Kyle Pitts Johnny Smith who you know sell high on Kyle Pitts would be my advice when you score two weeks in a row because yeah. Johnny Smith is still heavily involved he scored a touchdown both had four catches I mean you you can not sell high because what are you going to get to replace your tight end? I mean, that's if you want to roll Kyle Pitts back out there, but negative game script is beneficial. He scored early. Wow. Yeah. I'm looking at this little, uh, the, the, just the context of how bad the week was. Yeah, put o it on display. Only three of the top ten tight ends this week were started. You had Kelsey, Pitts, who was started in 68% of leagues, and Mark Andrews. The rest of the top ten – are just guys that give me the names. Uh, Dalton Schultz, twenty five percent started. Twenty five percent started. Jonu Smith, thirteen percent started. Michael Mayer, uh, which keep keep your eye on him. We kind of highlighted him a bit last week. That said, it was it was strange that you would spend a second round pick on this guy and then do absolutely nothing when you could use him. Got a few targets the past week and then had him. He uh, he must not have made our threshold here to be a stud, but he had a he had a solid game. Yeah, he and and he's super talented. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you know he is. this is a guy who dominated in high school, dominated in college, uh, had the draft capital to continue in the uh, NFL. Uh, uh, Britton Strange, ah uh, yes, Taysom Hill, Kylan Granson, and Trey McBride. Oh, T McB somehow started in one percent of leagues. <laughs> that would be two tight end leagues, something like that. Um, all right, let's move on. Pooped in his big boy pants. Do we have enough time? Do we have enough pants? Because <laughs> this could be a long segment. Cousins, Purdy, Stafford, Geno, and Mayfield were the duds at, at quarterback. Which, you know, yeah, they were bad. But I almost want to talk about them not at all. Because I don't think that there was a lot of dependency there. You, you you couldn't have been expecting a ton from... I mean, Kirk Cousins would have been the one that you hoped for, but you didn't have Justin Jefferson, okay? I want to talk about Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. Those are the two players in the partial dud category. They put up like 22 fantasy points this week in our league, in six-point league. You know, they were drafted significantly higher than a, a ton sure. of Tua or Goff or Howell or... You know, some of these players that had bigger weeks, and this has been a trend. Like uh, Patrick Mahomes, the defense in Kansas City, Kelsey being really the only reliable target, and then Lamar Jackson. Like, this has been a trend in in Baltimore. Mike, you said it to me this weekend. Like, their offense is not good. No, it's it's not. The, the Monken experiment. I mean, look, L Lamar on the course of the season has been good for fantasy football. The past two weeks have been – rough and you had the you know the drop gate two weeks ago and this this performance against Tennessee you had hoped for more but 21 for 223 at a passing touchdown and he put up 62 rushing yards uh so I mean he's still a top 10 quarterback on the week quarterback scoring was super low because he is sitting at I'm, I'm looking at 17 points in a in a four point scoring format so like that's which is what, that, should, that should not be QB7. It's also what Mahomes was. So let's not pay attention to their weekly rank as much as right, their yeah, yeah. Under, per, underwhelming numbers the, and, and the prescription going forward for those guys. But the yeah the offense is we're, – we're seeing more Lamar throwing, but the, the routes and the, the scheme overall not, not featuring Mark Andrews, not, not designing up better deep shots for Zay Flowers. It's, it's really frustrating. I, I am – probably more concerned with Mahomes than I am with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's offense, I think, has room to improve. There are things like Mike just said, like, why aren't you using Mark Andrews more, scheming Zay Flowers down the field? Like, those are changes that could be made that could be positive. I think on Mahomes, they don't need 
to make changes. I think the biggest problem is their defense has been very good. Their running game with Pacheco is working, and you know, in in years past, their their defense hasn't necessarily been this good. So I worry more about what is needed from Mahomes. Um, I don't know that it's going to change that much. I mean, he is phenomenal. I'm not speaking anything. He's the best quarterback of all time. We all agree about that, right? And he he uh, certainly could be. He's not the By greatest the of all time. Like that's Brady. He's got the title, but but the best. Like he's. I I guess I wouldn't say that myself, but mm, um, I'm pretty. I'll be close pretty soon. So uh, you know, but for fantasy purposes, I I do have slight concern that what you're going to see from Mahomes is like, you know, the quarterback six or the quarterback seven when he was drafted as the number one quarterback. Lamar at least is still running. I mean, you know, you you had uh, Lamar with uh he was 62 yards this week, 45 last week. Yeah. I had is a game it, with is, 100 on the season already. Are you saying you'd rather have Lamar rest the season? Yeah, I think I would rather have Lamar than than Mahomes. Ooh, that's hot. Lamar has Jacksonville, San Francisco, Miami for his playoffs just for what it's worth. Mahomes has New England, Las Vegas, and Cincinnati for his playoffs, just for what it's worth. I mean, we're six weeks in. It, sure. you, you can glance that direction when you That's, talk about setting yes. yourself up for the uh, the end of the season. Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a bigger question. Would you rather have Tua or would you rather have Lamar or Mahomes? Mm. And Jason's eyes lit up. <laughs> I mean, Tua's been – Tua can explode. This offense, I, I, you just want pieces of the Dolphins' offense right now. L L let me let me put it this way: Would you be more afraid facing Tua or Mahomes or Lamar? I would be the most afraid facing Lamar, and then Tua and then Mahomes. Interesting. I think I'm still scared of Mahomes. Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying yes. of, of those three, I think I think he's still at the top of the list. We just, we have if the. The success that they had last year, you know, basically with no true number one wide receiver, it is filtering into this year of we can get it done without that. And the the defense stepping up is certainly a part of it. But the the transition to Pacheco, Jay, you, you didn't mention it, but I, I think that's the that's the bigger thing is in the Mahomes era, we haven't, you know, sit, or since Kareem Hunt, we haven't seen the Kansas City Chiefs establish anything like Pacheco last year was what he was the guy and he was getting some like single digit opportunities per week and no passes yeah this it, year he's getting maybe six catches last game yeah the last month Pacheco has uh 16.8 rushing attempts per game that yeah, that's we, a lot I mean I bring I bring those comparisons up because this is the time of the year where you start to adjust your preseason narratives with the realities of today you start looking and saying like you know, I last week before before the week, I was like, eh, "Do I trade Tua and picks to get Lamar?" That's a, I mean, it's tough to make those right. calls. Do you it stick is. with the fire that is has got you here, or do you do you make a move for somebody that's been reliable over time? I mean, Lamar has had, I believe, two or three zero touchdown games. He's had no three touchdown games um, through the air, and we were hoping for more with Monkin. Um, all right, running back duds. Mixon looked awful. Pierce. 33% of snaps. Now, the Pierce game had the chance of being a complete uh, fooled you situation. He had three separate drives with the ball inside the three where they gave him the football and he didn't score. Yeah, he had three carries inside the five that amounted to negative seven rushing Yeah, New yards. Orleans stuffed all of them. And they, they played a lot with... Devin Singletary at the like thirty three percent of snaps for Pierce, fifty four percent for Singletary. Singletary on his opportunities looked like a good running back, and they won. They beat the Saints with this formula. So go, they're going into the bye week. It could be just a blip in the radar for Damian Pierce and the snap count, but it, you at least need to have your antennae up with Singletary and then Latavius Murray in Buffalo. What I seem to have observed as a very interested party <laughs> is that there is a migration to Singletary and Latavius 
when they believe they need somebody to be a fundamental pass blocker. And it seemed like the Giants were getting after Josh Allen last night, and suddenly Latavius is on the field a ton. Oh, man, James Cook had one of the biggest whiffs of a pass block. It, it didn't actually result because, you know, Josh Allen just rolled out, but it was like, cool. It was like, right this way, sir. <laughs> I, so there you go. I didn't even see that play, but I think that that's what – there is a trustworthiness with Latavius on trying to pass block when Allen's getting hit and the offense isn't working. Like, if they're cruising, James Cook – I mean, James Cook was better on the ground. You know, it was 14 for 71 – but both of those guys are losing snaps. Pierce, James Cook, concerning. Rashad White. Yeah, he lives here. <laughs> like this guy's this guy still hasn't cleaned up from last time. Deonta Foreman. Foreman's uh, I think a huge disappointment because it was. you know, that's that's a player who everyone went out and got in case the news broke in his favor and then the news broke in his favor and it was like all right and then he gets 15 carries 65 rushing yards i mean it it just didn't result in fantasy points yeah i had well, the 15 carries like how many of those were second half carry we he, were we were bewildered darrington evans had like i don't know what seemed like 80 percent of the work in the first half yeah it's it seemed like he was on the field and it was a just a <laughs> this whole situation is hilarious because sunday live I'm answering questions about Deonta Foreman. You know, Roshan's out. Travis Homer's. I'm like, I don't even know who's who's fourth in the depth chart. And I look at him. Oh, Darrington Evans. I, yeah, I remember the promise of Darrington Evans. Don't worry about him. Deonta Foreman's going to get all the work. And then the game starts, and it's Darrington Evans. Like, what is happening here? What are we doing? But the they will be interesting, the Chicago Bears, moving forward. Yes, Roshan Johnson's going to be back. The way that they treated Deonta Foreman in this matchup, you have to presume that Roshan is going to be the featured running back for the team. But what do they what do they do with if Justin Fields can't go? And that could be a really run heavy team. Well, and I'll, I'll mention it quickly because James Conner is going to be out for an extended period of time. Oh man! But like, uh, oh man, Demarcado got almost no work. Yeah, Damian Williams was featured. Uh, Keontae Ingram, Mike's favorite player, who I'm gonna get you a jersey. Keontae Ingram. They nope. don't make them. No, they don't. They don't make them. Uh, he did, hey. It'll be a custom. He hit four yards in attempt. Did he really? He did. So what was the breakdown in carries there So in I'm looking it up. So uh, Ingram had 10 for 40, and Damian Williams was 8 for 36. The snaps were heavily in uh, Keontae's favor, though. By heavy, I mean he was at 37. So what do you? What would you? who would you play moving forward? It's, it would be Keontae Ingram. All right, Duds at wide receiver. Tell me if you're worried. Uh, we talked about Puka. Uh, Not worried. Four for 26. Uh, Devontae Adams, he's, two for 29. He's hurt. So, I so mean, is his quarterback. Yeah. I mean, the, the one that had, like, eyes for him. I'm it, With Brian Hoyer, it should be okay-ish. That's that's fine for fantasy replacement. The, the question is, when will Devontae Adams be healthy? And he, if he's going to keep playing through – you won't – it'll just all of a sudden be one week of, oh, Devontae Adams has targets and he's good now. And in the meantime, I guess you're you're, you're just starting you're him. starting him and crossing your fingers that this is the week that he's back. I yeah. think this is the week he'll be back. Against Chicago? Yeah. The, we, had a, uh, we had a team in our league, Al Borland, who is uh, not with us this morning. Uh, he's, he's alive. Don't worry. He's alive. I said this morning. Okay, yeah. I didn't just, say he's just not with us. He's, just, so he's, he's no longer, no longer with, with. I didn't say he no longer. It did kind of sound yeah, that it way. Does. It did. So, uh, like he's, he's alive, you know. uh, but not fantasy speaking. Because last week, DJ Moore and Justin Fields provided him with enough fantasy. Oh yeah, that was cool. Ammo to score two hundred fantasy points. Two hundred points. Oh, because that was against you. Yeah, that's why you said cool when he scored seventy yeah. this week. Yeah, cool. DJ Moore five for fifty one, proving that even in a good matchup. Even after a great performance, he can still be undermined well, by a bad offensive uh, that whole game performance I mean, by Justin Fields. That was we got crushed by the divisional matchup of Minnesota versus Chicago. Should have been an offensive output. Instead, we got a game thirteen to nineteen, and everyone was struggling. Jordan. The only reason Jordan Addison is not a wasn't featured in the in the bust area is he got a touchdown. 
Mm -hmm. But uh, aside from that, Addison did nothing. Yeah, I mean, obviously with DJ Moore, you you lost half the game for for Justin Fields. He only played fifty three percent of the snaps, which was very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Devontae Smith, we talked about it, five yeah, for forty four. Calvin Ridley, the, these games have become uh, a pattern. Uh, he he seems to be featured, have a big performance. Uh, it was the number nine wide receiver last week, seven for one twenty two. But if you look at the three weeks prior to the big breakout and the week after it, you know, two for 32, three for 40, two for 38, four for 30. That's four games out of five where you're not breaking the 40-yard mark. And he gets the Saints the this upcoming week. Trevor Lawrence is banged up. I don't know. That's... I mean, where are we with... It's not a great situation. I, I want to check something really quick with Christian Kirk because... Oh, and it's Thursday. So Christian Kirk on the season. Christian Kirk is dominating. Christian Kirk is the wide receiver 18, and uh, Calvin Ridley on the season is the wide receiver 20... 24. Four. Cur currently 24. And that's counting Christian Kirk week one was not yeah. part of the offense. Mike Evans, 10 targets, 4 for 49. Yeah. Oh, three, three drops? Four? I mean, some pretty bad drops in this one. T. Higgins, 2 for 20. Yep. Figure this was what was going to happen, but T. Higgins is... Did you talk about that on Sunday Live? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I talked about especially because I have him. So I talked about, oh, this is my situation. I'm going to play T. Higgins because he's – Who was like, your pivot? Um, I mean, it was either DeMarcado, which that was just – that was uh, – do I play this guy knowing that he's not going to get the work because everything said that Keontae Ingram was it. Or it was Wandale Robinson with Tyrod Taylor against the Buffalo Bills, which turns out was the correct decision. Would that have won you the week? Yes. <laughs> mm. Yep. Hollywood Brown, 4 for 34 on 11 targets. Missed a couple touchdowns by a fingertip of the Los Angeles Rams defender. Yeah, and there was also the Not really big, worried about him. Not worried about that at all. There was, there was another big play down the sideline where he had his defender smoked. Yeah. And the ball was just thrown a little too far out of bounds. Seattle, Baltimore, Cleveland. Next three games for the Cardinals, so they're going to lose three in a row uh Gabe Davis the streak finally ended three for yep. 21 and a fumble I, I honestly thought the game part of the problem with the Bills offense was the over targeting of Stefan Diggs and not having creative play calling to involve Dawson Knox Gabe Davis James I, Cook James Cook had zero targets do you realize this mm -hmm. the guy that's supposed to be that's like, ridiculous you know you come out and you run these screens and you get him involved in the offense to start the year in the passing game and now you don't target him Yep. And what's that all about? Uh, yeah, what's that all about? And what's it all about of you are hyper-targeting Stephon Diggs, and then on the final passing touchdown, uh, you go to a guy who's not had a target the whole year? It worked, though, right? Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most. <laughs> it No, it, it worked, but that's a that's full process over results. Or results over process. I'm sorry. No, I, did, I did get all worked. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it, well, <laughs> Mike, Mike, it was really good for them. They won the game because of it. They they did. They did not <laughs> deserve to. I'm not talking about that play, but okay. I'm saying overall, the, Gi the Giants, the halftime debacle of when, they're, when they're at the goal line with no time left, or I mean with, with plenty of time left, but no time out. And they ran. And they run the ball, and then they're like, oh, they were laying on Saquon Barkley. Of course they are, because you were right. idiots and you ran the ball. Papa Josh was – um. Like I said, I was playing some uh, some Rocket League with Papa Josh, trying to some half cathartic, ha cathartic <laughs> second half, and I was just having him check the score. And he literally he'd check his phone and he'd be like, "I don't know if it's refreshing. This isn't right, right? Six nothing, Giants over <laughs> Buffalo. It's not right. This thing's That's broken. not right." Uh, Kittle died at the. I mean, this is verbatim what Jason said. He has explosive games, and then you get this. He went from three touchdowns to one for one. In a game you lose Debo and CMC, mm -hmm. inexcusable. Yeah. Dallas Goddard uh, didn't kill you. Five he, for 42. I would not worry was, about him. He might have been the fourth best start. Of, I mean. Like of, of, of tight of players ends that were started. started. Yeah. Sam Laporta, four for 36 on 11 targets. Yeah. That's a buy opportunity. Sure. Logan Thomas. Uh, I heard that, him called uh, Logan Anonymous. <laughs> Yeah. That's pretty good. That one was really disappointing. Yes. Um, very. Low gone, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, because you 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 had, you know, targets the week before, 11 targets, and then 
you go forward and you get one well, and, and and he had been targeted a lot in previous weeks i mean eight targets in week one just disappeared poof mm-hmm. uh colt Komet two for nine back down to earth zach Ertz two for and 22 they, i wish the cardinals would have told me that this was the week that they're going to get the ball to trey mcbride because the the matchup was there like it was a tight end against the Rams is going to have a good week. It just was not the guy that who that they've been using. So there you go. Big time waiver show tomorrow. We're going to break it all down. There's a lot to sift through. A lot of depth running back options to be picked up. You've got more bye weeks next week that are going to be more impactful than this past week was. There is so much to talk about, and this is like make or break time of the season where you know one of our tips on this show before, Mike's brought it up, you're, you're getting to the stage where you're trying to buy some wins. And sometimes that's looking very very much at the week directly in front of you above all else to stay in contention for playoff uh, implications in your league. And, uh, you know, Jason did it with David Montgomery. Mm-hmm. I went and just manufactured that victory. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Jason. That doesn't feel no, good. Not. Hey, no, we're I... in the same division. You want me to lose, just like I want you to lose. Shame on you, Mike, for not beating it. Yeah, you were upset last night that I had won. Yes, I am always upset when you win in league of record. I know. You you could have uh, spent the rest of your fab on DeMarcado. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> All right, big waiver show tomorrow. Don't miss it. Follow us on YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.